last August uh, when Dr. Holly came uh, to our district. I uh, was familiar with his work, had actually um, seen Anthony Muhammad before, and so uh, buying in, I believed wholeheartedly in, in the mindset and was really struggling with my skill set. Um, and so what's, what's just been so amazing to me uh, is that, the, and I know this about great teaching, it's not, it's not rocket science, it's, it's based on very um, basic, planful ideas. What, what I feel like I was missing, having the mindset, having a belief that um, I need every voice represented and I need to make sure that my curriculum is not just reflecting my experience um, and that I'm, I'm doing a, a good job of bringing everyone to the table. It was my skill set that was lacking and what's been so uh, exciting is to see the growth in my skill set, which I will admit is um, you know, definitely still in the uh, you know, kicker, splasher, you know, or, you know, more shallow into the pool, and I'm I'm so excited to develop my skill set around those deeper in the pool activities because in whether seeing the videos that are on um, the the YouTube channel or um, you know seeing the coaches here and talking to the coaches, I know that there is a potential to not only create the the, the vibe that I want, but to to have students learning in a way that I think every teacher dreams about when they when they decide oh I want to be a teacher. No teacher. Uh, I don't believe any teacher. I never wanted to be the kind of teacher who got um, compliance. I mean, that, that's wonderful, I guess, in the sense that you're not having um, uh, you know, kids bouncing off the walls, but in some ways I'd rather have that. Compliance is in some ways the, the most uh, heartbreaking thing to see as an educator. And while I've really been a mindset believer before I guess I realized the, the terminology, it's the skill set that, that has to come along. and so. I can only imagine um, where I'll be in a year, three, five years, and, and just excited about that journey. And, and more than anything, excited to have a conversation with my colleagues around practices that are that are so concrete that there is no ambiguity. We're dancing around looking for one, two, three. Plenty of room up here, guys. Dance floor's open up here. Move around. Move around. One, two, three. One, two, three. In the air. One, two, three. about it first, I want you to write it down on a post-it note. So everyone's going to write it down on a post-it note and then place it on a campfire, okay? You're going to write down and instead of you sharing your response, when you place it on the campfire, it's now open for discussion. And after everyone writes it down, I'll give you a, uh, oh, I don't, the minute timer's not up there, I'll put it up there. Um, after you write it down, we're going to take turns sharing and you only share or you can only share on a post-it note that is not yours. That's the that's the only stipulation. You're not allowed to share on uh, your post-it note. The question right there: How is your memory a strength and how is it a weakness? While the timer's on, please. Oh, these are hurt. Hey guys, while the timer's on, let's respect <coughs> space. Thank you. You have 28 seconds.
wrap up your your response and please put it on the campfire. All right, when I say listen, you say up, listen, uh, listen. Uh, thank you. So, so everyone's post-it needs to be responded to, but it can't be responded to by the person who wrote it. So obviously, if you're the last person to share, uh, you're going to have to pick what, which one everyone is left. Establish who's going to go first. Let's go ahead and go with the person whose birthday is closest to today, so either side, either, either side. So Cayenne is going first in her group. All right. And once you establish that, go ahead and start your discussion. All right. So, want to hear a couple highlights from the campfire? This does not have to be what you said. All right. It can be if you feel like that was the highlight, uh, or if you want to put a uh, a friend uh, on not on the spot, but on you know give them credit for a great idea. You want to give them some uh, some respect, some perhaps a dab as Joe's doing. You you can do that. So uh, make sure you number off one through four. Three. Number it off one through four, and here we go. Table three. Table three. Number two. Table three. Number two. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> Guys, we have to have everyone focus. Uh, who is number two? To highlight from the campfire discussion about that question. How is memory and strength? How is memory a limitation? Let's show Cayenne and Ebony a little love. Let's give a little applause. Number three, table four, number three. A weakness of memory is that people can put memories in your head, like false memories. One sec, honey. Hey, guys. Please give your full attention to honey. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, a weakness is people can plant memories in your head, like false memories, and a strength is uh, you can remember things for a while. All right, let's show a little love behind. Let's give her some snacks. Interesting. Yeah, that's uh, that's always the dilemma. All right, because of time, and you're gonna have time to discuss. I want to move on to what we're gonna do. We're gonna do section one. Oh, sorry about that, Dr. Allen. Uh, we're going to do section one as a group, and we're going to practice jump in reading. And so uh, after somebody has read at least, and I'll start, uh, two sentences, somebody else can jump in at the end of the sentence. This is what you practiced yesterday. It's a good way to share and be uh, listening. You're also going to be marking up with either an exclamation point because you find that interesting, a question mark because you didn't understand it, a capital D because you disagree, or a heart because you love it. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I don't really like Section 1. One of the last times I saw my grandmother in her nursing home, she chatted cheerfully about her son who was away studying at university. Her story was... Uh, I can't have it. complex. It was a... Oh my god. It was as though a perfectly plausible antidote had been plugged from... Oh my god. <laughs> gradually develop amnesia about recent happenings while retaining a wealth of detail from their younger days and make up stories to cover their embarrassments about blanks. And generally, they know their memory is foggy. The, the kind of storytelling my grandmother did after a series of shows is a little different. Neurologists call it confabulation. It isn't fibbing, as there is no intent to deceive and people seem to believe what they are seeing. Until very recently, it was seen simply as a neuro ne neurological deficiency. <laughs> but those are vague words. You can't Good job, Matt. Keep going. A sign of something gone wrong. Now, however, it has become apparent that healthy become confib... I'm done. In fact, because of time, I'm going to have you work on uh, section one as a group. Review, and if you have not marked up, please do so. Review your marks, what you found interesting, what you disagreed with, what you had a question about, and then what you put a heart by. And a heart doesn't mean that you're in love with it, it's just something that really struck you. 
right? You're marking. You're going to come up with a 10 word or less summary, and here's the deal. You have to agree on it. So when I when we start this back up tomorrow, I'm going to put you into four groups. You'll join another table, and as a table, you'll have to agree on the 10 word or less summary. So you guys will have to collaborate and figure out what is the most important part of that section so you can share it out with the rest of the class. So my journey in CLR is definitely reflected in the class that I just taught in that um, there are moments where it, it clicks and the students and, and myself are able to have a classroom that uh, more than anything else um, validates learning. And it validates learning through um, letting all students know that not only is their voice needed, in some ways it's required because it will be impossible for us to have a, a fully developed understanding of the topic. In this case, we were talking about memory and its impact on history, uh, that without all voices, um, it will not be a complete conversation. Um, but also on my CLR journey, still um, working to make it more seamless so that uh, the protocols are not necessarily um, uh, a stop in the class and re, um, reconfigure and, and, and re, um, almost sort of reset the table, but are a, a continuing flow. I think that's, that's the best way to describe um, where I'm at is that the, the flow is there, but it's not continuous and that I know that um, uh, a lot of that comes in the, the the planning and and not so much understanding how to do the protocols but how to when, when is the right time to uh, um, have the students do a moment of silence when is the right time to have them uh, do the campfire dis discussion what I will say is um, uh, not the exact same sequence because I'm, I'm trying to implement um, both response discussion um, and getting getting there on the vocabulary uh, protocols um, but teaching this in the in the um, past oftentimes would would revolve around three or four key students and um, today I was very happy to see all voices uh, contributing to the conversation but getting into the campfire uh, protocol was a little bit choppier than I wanted um, but I think the, the one that I, I have done it previously and had better success and I think possibly I was I was um, trying to cram too much in from what we did yesterday was the, the musical shares where um, in the past when it's been successful it's been um, uh, less less steps and this time I had to add a few steps to make sure that, that all um, sections of the material we covered the day before were being addressed and in doing that um, I think the, the musical shares were not as crisp and didn't have the same um, uh, vibe and, and, and energy that the uh, the post campfire discussion had. So what, I, what I've learned through my coaching experience is um, to, to go have a personal conversation with the student first and review why the, the protocol is uh, important to our ability to continue uh, an ongoing conversation, but more importantly, why it's Im important for us to um, switch into that behavior, not because it's what I want you to do, but because as a group, we are able to have a much more um, uh, vibrant and uh, engaging experience if all are joining. And it's almost like the, the tipping point idea that if you get enough going, everyone will jump in. And so if they're not there, you've got to stop to, to re-educate. Uh, re